a lot of you struggle in your trading for this one reason, and that is time frame alignment. You lack the ability to identify where your higher time frame is going, and that in turn messes your lower time frame executions. A lot of times, I'm sure you guys have experienced this, but when you have a market structure break on a lower time frame, you enter into a trade there, but it reverses against you completely, and it all comes down to your time frame alignment. So, let's begin. Generally, there are three types of time frames you should use in your time frame alignment, and that is your higher time frame, your middle time frame, and your lower time frame. There's other words for this, such as your long term, intermediate, and short term time frames. But to keep it simple, higher time frame, middle time frame, and lower time frame. Those are the three types that we will be using for this video. The specific time frame that we will use in this video is higher time frame will be my daily, middle time frame will be my hourly, and then my lower time frame will be my five minutes. So keep that in mind. Generally, all of your trades will be determined off of the higher time frame. So where's the higher time frame reacting off of? Where is it expanding to? From that, you would refine on your median time frame, which is the hourly in this instance. You could refine your trades to the key levels on the middle time frame to trade in a direction of the higher time frame. And all you're doing on the lower time frame is refining those entries on your middle time frame's key levels. So let's begin with your first example. Starting on your higher time frame, we will be doing top down analysis from the higher time frame all the way down to hourly. What is price currently showing us on the higher time frame direction? Yeah? This is where you have your overall drawn liquidity. The reason being is look at this. This is a market maker sell model. All the accumulation levels should become new distribution levels for price to expand lower. And currently, what we have on this side of the graph is the sell curve. Here, you have your smart money reversal. And from that point in time, all the way until now, price has constantly just been revisiting premium arrays, distributing price lower, disrespecting discount arrays in the form of old lows. And then the process repeats. So premium arrays are being respected discount arrays are being disrespected. And that is your first telltale sign that we are currently in a bearish order flow on the higher time frame direction. So your higher time frame is bearish. This is where you could use the concept of internal to external range of liquidity. What does the price do here? It swept that buy side liquidity and it taps into a mitigation block, which is also aligned with your minor bearish displacement. They are your old accumulation levels and they become your new distribution level on the sell curve of the market maker sell model. And this is a good confluence because it overlaps with these mitigation blocks or these premium arrays, whatever premium array you want to use in this certain price action. But here, the most obvious one is your mitigation block that price taps into and sweeps this buy side liquidity before continuing lower. So external range liquidity in the form of this low has been swept. What would you expect next? External, internal, and then external. So internal range liquidity. They are your imbalances that are left behind. Because the two functions in price, I've always mentioned this, rebalance all inefficiencies and seek new liquidity. So here you would anticipate for price to come back into one of these imbalances before continuing lower and eventually taking out your overall drawn liquidity, which is this original consolidation in the market maker sell model. Playing price out. Look what you get there. Price comes back into one of these imbalances. Ideally, this is where you would anticipate for the imbalances to stay respected and then for price to continue lower, and this becomes your new immediate drawn liquidity, in line with just overall drawn liquidity being the sell side liquidity. So now, your higher time frame direction, remember, is bearish, is respecting pre memories, and it's come back into one of those pre memories, specifically an imbalance that has left behind, which is your internal range of liquidity. So here, you would anticipate for price to respect that, and then continue lower to the sell side liquidity. This is where you would drop down onto your middle time frame. For more advanced traders, Generally, you wouldn't need to see an alignment to go bearish from the middle time frame with your higher time frame to look for a trade. However, as this is the basic of time frame alignment, let's keep things simple and say the highest probability trades will always come when all of your time frame is aligned together. Your daily higher time frame is bearish. Now you will drop down onto your middle time frame and look for a bearish alignment with your daily time frame after tapping into this daily imbalance. So let's keep playing price out and see when it gives us that market structure shift. There, you have your market structure shift. All right, backed up with heavy displacement. Why is this your market structure shift? You have a swing low that comes into an imbalance. That is your intermediate term low, and that is your market structure shift. Backed up by the fact that price here is respecting premium arrays again and disrespecting discount arrays. You have a bearish order block, price retraces into that bearish order block and displaces lower, taking out this old low, which is your intermediate term low, which is your market structure shift. So, 
your hourly time frame is now aligned with my daily time frame. High time frame, bearish. Now your middle time frame is bearish. What did I mention at the start of this video? This is where you would look for PDRAs that your hourly time frame could come back into. Here, you have this mitigation block. Playing price out, it comes back into that mitigation block. This is where you would do the same thing that you've done on the middle time frame and you would do on the lower time frame. Drop it down to the lower time frame. Look for the same alignment. That is where you get there. Swing low, market structure break. So now we had a market structure break on the lower time frame. Your lower time frame refines the entries. This is where you have your executions on the lower time frame. So this is the highest probability trade you could take. Your lower time frame is in line with your middle time frame, which is also in line with your higher time frame. So now on the lower time frame, after we had our market structure break, the exact same thing that you've done on the higher time frame all the way down to your lower time frame, you look for a key level. And from that key level, this is where you could enter. Entry there. Stop loss just above this high. And what would you look to target? This immediate draw on liquidity on the lower time frame. So there, for a nice 2R and play price out. Taps us in. And then it has aggressive move lower. Before eventually taking out your sell-side liquidity. So that's a very solid 2R trade. Do you see how simple and high probability that is? All you had to do was determine your higher time frame direction, right? Once you've determined your higher time frame direction, you would mark out the key levels on your higher time frame direction. Be patient, wait for it to come back to those key levels, and then you would drop down onto your middle time frame. To ensure the highest probability trades, you would want to align your middle time frame with your higher time frame direction. So if your high time frame direction was bullish, you would want to see a bullish market structure break on the middle time frame to your line. But in this scenario, the daily was bearish. So you would want to see a bearish market structure shift or market structure break on the middle time frame to align itself with the higher time frame. Once you get that on the middle time frame, the exact same thing you've done on the higher time frame, you would do on the middle time frame. Look for a key level that a price could come back into. Once it's come back to that key level, drill down onto your execution time frame or your lower time frame and wait for the same realignment and the same refinements. So here, middle time frame bearish, higher time frame bearish. On the lower time frame, remember it taps into your middle time frame's key level. So on the lower time frame, once it does so, you will look for a bearish market structure shift and you would again mark out your key levels that price could come back into. To place your entries, stop loss at a reasonable place that invalidates the trade idea if it was taken out and a TP at either your immediate draw on the lower time frame or a target on the middle time frame. But for simplicity of this video, Let's just aim for your lower time frame immediate target. So do you see how simple it gets? You don't have to overcomplicate anything. That is all time frame alignment is. As price is fractal, you're looking for the same thing on the high time frame to the middle time frame and all the way down to your lower time frame. So here you have your second example. This time, instead of bearish, we are bullish. Because here, starting always with your higher time frame, because like I said, your lower time frame trades are always based off of your higher time frame direction. Here, what does price do? Swing high. That gets violated, that is your market structure break. And then that is backed up by the constant respect of discount raise and disrespect of premium raise. So here, a new high gets implemented, which also gets disrespected. Same thing, mitigation block. Price comes back into that mitigation block. So what will your next draw on liquidity be? This high, right? In the form of your buy side liquidity. So here you would anticipate for price to go higher. Now, look at what it does. It doesn't go higher, and instead, it sweeps this liquidity. The reason why I say that is a sweep and not a break is because what is your higher time frame direction showing you? This is where a lot of you get muddled up. Because here, you would think it's a reversal after taking out this sort of liquidity. But your higher time frame direction is still showing you respect of discount rates and disrespect of pre memories. This low was technically just a sweep because the body, look at where it closed. It closed back within the range and there was a long wick that was left behind. So when price swept this sell side liquidity, you could tell that all price was doing when it swept that sell side liquidity was accumulating more longs before distributing it higher and taking out this buy side liquidity in line with your higher time frame direction. Think of it like this. When price took out this low, passive buyers absorbed the orders and aggressive buyers stepped in to take price higher. So here, if you go down to the lower time frame, it becomes a lot more clear. This is why your highest probability trades will always come when all of your time frame are aligned together. Your middle time frame confirms that that was just a sweep and price is still respecting bullish price action. 
which is your higher time frame direction. You get this strong market structure break. Look at the lack of bearish candles here. And even if there were bearish candles, for example here, all that was doing was rebalancing this imbalance and supporting price to go higher. So down close candles are supporting price to go higher. So here after we swept this source of liquidity, your higher time frame direction remains bullish. And your middle time frame direction confirms that bullish sentiment on the higher time frame by giving you a very strong market structure break. So now your middle time frame is also bullish. Playing price up, going to the next day, London kill zone, you have this large imbalance that was left behind. So here price is respecting positively off of that imbalance. This is where you could draw down onto a lower time frame. Again, the exact same thing. You look for an alignment on the lower time frame to support your middle time frame's direction and your higher time frame bullish direction. So here, when we get that bullish alignment, this is where we could look for our entries. Off of this bullish order block, stop loss below here, and targets to the upside. Now, be wary that here you have relatively equal lows. And as price is consolidating around this area, it could very well come down, accumulation, manipulation, and then distribute higher. That is also another possible scenario, simply due to this relatively equal lows. And from what I've seen, when price is accumulating, especially before London, ideally you would want to see some sort of a manipulation. Accumulation, manipulation, distribution, and some sort of a retracement to form the candle. If you are unsure of what I'm talking about, make sure to watch my previous video where I go over candle formation. So here, accumulation, we could get manipulation. But for now, let's just keep playing price out and see if it continues higher. And instead, it doesn't. So that is your manipulation. Those relatively equal lows got taken out for your manipulation. Because here, we were accumulating. And this is your manipulation to go from a sell program to a buy program. After we had our manipulation, because you have strong bias, on your middle time frame being bullish and your daily time frame, which is your high time frame, being bullish, you could still look to enter another trade here if the lower time frame gives you another confirmation to go long. So that's what it does. It gives you a market structure shift. So what do you have here? Internal to external range liquidity. It took out external range liquidity in the form of this market structure shift. So you could enter off of this and stop loss below there. What would you look to target? Go into the hourly time frame, right? This should be your overall draw liquidity. However, it's illogical to have a target all the way up until there because price doesn't just expand in one go. It constantly has to retrace. So when it comes up to here, right, you could be in a significant floating profit and price just reverse completely from there to have a deep retracement before continuing higher and taking out your tech profit if you were still within the trade. Hence why it's illogical to have such a high target. And ideally, you should look for immediate draws on liquidity to take partials out or full TPs and eventually anticipate price to come all the way up to this buy side liquidity. So let's mark out what you have here. Balance price range that price can come back into and also another one up here. So your take profits shouldn't just be at the highs or at the lows. Your draws on liquidity can also be at places where you would anticipate a minor retracement or a reaction off of and that could be this balance price range. So for simplicity, let's just go for fix 3R around this first balance price range. Dropping down, back down into the five minute. Price comes into that imbalance and expands heavily higher. Hitting your take profit for 3R and coming into this balance price range. Right, and look how when it came into that balance price range, you got a minor retracement before it continues higher. And it came further past this balance price range and close to this buy side liquidity. Right, if we keep playing price up, let's see what it does. You see how deep of a retracement it had before it continued higher. It came extremely close to this buy side liquidity, but it had a significantly deep retracement. In this specific example, it didn't hit your stop loss. But in most cases, the deep retracement will take out your stop loss. Hence why it's illogical to have such a high TP. So that is another example showing you how simple your time frame alignment has to be. Don't overcomplicate it. The reason why a lot of you are failing trades when you enter off of positions and it seems like the market is completely reversing on you, that is because you're too glued to the lower time frame. You are unaware of what your middle time frame and your higher time frame is currently telling you. Your highest probability trades, like I've said, will always come when your lower time frame, your middle time frame, and your higher time frame are all aligned together. This doesn't necessarily mean that if there's some misalignment with your time frames, 
you won't be profitable, but this is the basics of time frame alignment. So in future videos, we will talk about more advanced time frame alignment where some time frames could be misaligned. But for now, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. Like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.